I mean, it hasn't it hasn't hit three million yet. I mean, there's kind of a chance. Damn you, Balan. What's going on, guys? It's RGT85. Hope everyone is having a great day. But of course, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today because Nintendo's latest financial report went out late last night, early in the morning, if you're on the East Coast. And there's a ton of stuff to go over with this. We have the Q&A section, which is kind of what I'm going to focus on mostly in this video. But there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. So if this is your first time on the channel, hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video. But without any further ado, let's get into this report. And we have some updated sales statistics for Nintendo's Switch games and Metroid Dread, it sold 2.74 million units worldwide already. And honestly, I'm very impressed. We still haven't hit the 3 million yet, but I mean, definitely we probably will hit that 3 million within the first year of launching. Just very impressive numbers. It's a great game. Don't get me wrong. It is a great game. I just didn't know if the Metroid fan base would really support it because it always seems like the Metroid fan base has been more niche than many other Nintendo titles. And I mean, it's not hitting 10, 15, 20 million, but 3 million plus is definitely very respectable for this game. I still don't think it's quite hit it yet, but probably by like March or April, I'm sure it will finally hit the three million sold i don't have to play that son of a bitch balan wonder world whatever man whatever we also have some updated sales statistics on the nintendo switch hardware itself and it has outsold the nintendo wii it has outsold the original playstation coming in at over 103 million units sold worldwide and I mean, it's pacing fast, man. You got to remember, we're just coming up on like the fifth year of this system, really. So for this system to be still going so strong, for it to be going so strong in this, you know, minefield of video game consoles where everyone is pushing these high resolution graphics, HDR, 4K, ray tracing, and the Nintendo is like, hey, here's a little fun thing you could play. You know, you can play it on your TV. You can play it on the go. And I mean, it's kind of cool. It's got a 720p screen on it. Like it's still decimating sales figures for other platforms. So definitely some very impressive stuff. We're going to go over a general sales listing for the Nintendo Switch games, how many they've sold so far. And, you know, just kind of talk about them very briefly here. So as you can see, these are all as of December 31st of 2021. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This is sickening. This is sick. This is ridiculous. Animal Crossing, ridiculous. Breath of the Wild, ridiculous. You got to remember, like Zelda games always sold good comparative to, you know, the Switch hardware, but never, never like this. Never like this. Pokemon Sword and Shield, remember all that bitching online? That, that really made a huge difference here. You know, oh, the game looks like crap, but people still bought it, so it doesn't really matter. So just some insane sales figures. Other companies would give their left testicle to have sales figures like this on their software, and that's why they rely so heavily on third-party software. So this first-party game, you know, that's what Nintendo is focused on. That's what Nintendo is working on. But during this financial report briefing, of course, there is the Q&A section of it, and there was a lot of interesting topics brought up with this, such as new Switch hardware, NFTs, the metaverse, buying other companies. So I want to explore these things very briefly with you guys and just talk about the different answers that were given. Now, this is a combination of reporting from Bloomberg and David Gibson over on Twitter, who was actually on the call himself. He does stuff like this. He lives in Japan, and he translates this stuff for us gaijins in the United States or those of us who speak English. So let's so let's just jump right into it because there's some very interesting stuff on the talks of nfts and metaverse president furukara actually said the following we have an interest in this area we feel the potential in this area but we wonder what joy we can provide in this area and this is difficult to define right now now according to david gibson nintendo or president furukara was mostly talking about the metaverse side of things more so than the nft stuff and really I think this is just kind of a general answer to give someone like a shareholder because I mean, let's be realistic here. Nintendo, their, their online is, isn't all that great. You expect them to just be like, oh, NFTs. Yeah, we know what NFTs are. We're just going to roll out a huge NFT thing where you can get Mario smoking a joint or something like I just don't think this is an area that Nintendo is super interested in. I just think things like metaverse and NFTs are hot buzzwords right now, especially in the business side of things, because there's a lot of money in this stuff. I don't know who's spending the money because it seems like everyone I know thinks NFTs and 
all that sort of stuff are just stupid as hell and like don't don't understand the point of it obviously there's some stuff behind the scenes you can do with things like the blockchain where you could buy digital games and then potentially sell them on a digital marketplace which is something that you can't do with digital games right now you can only do that with physical games but i don't see these companies really jumping into the deep end of the pool with that because obviously you could do some shady shit with that so i don't know i think this is a very just sort of broad answer from president for Wakara. he's not very interested in doing this sort of stuff but i'm sure these shareholders such as myself who's a shareholder are like yo what's what's up with the nfts man what's up with the nfts Moving right along, of course, Nintendo Switch hardware itself is a very hot topic at these discussions because, well, people want to see something a little bit beefier, whether it's the shareholders wanting to keep up with the Joneses because they're worried about the momentum of the system, or just diehard Nintendo Switch fans who want something a bit stronger. Well, President Furukara did talk about the hardware side of things, talked about the semiconductor shortage situation. Nintendo actually docked their fiscal year potential sales from 24 million of last year down to 23 million for the upcoming fiscal year because of the semiconductor shortage issue. And as far as different hardware is concerned, President Forecar said the following. Switch is just in the middle of its life cycle, and momentum going into this year is good. The Switch is ready to break a pattern of our past consoles that saw momentum weakening in the sixth year on the market and grow further. So I don't think you're seeing a successor anytime soon. Like, I really feel like, you know, this fabled Switch Pro thing is probably what we're going to get, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be marketed as that. Like, I'm looking at this from a completely different perspective. I'm looking at this from, like, how companies handle cell phones and stuff like that. Like, yes, your old cell phone can still do everything that your new cell phone could do. Your new cell phone just does it better. And it's still like, like, take iPhone, for instance. Like, your iPhone is still your iPhone. There's just different iterations of the iPhone from the iPhone 1 to what? The 11, 12, I don't know what they're on. I'm an Android user because Android is a superior race. But no, like, I think that's what the realm Nintendo is going to go in with the Nintendo Switch. Obviously, we've seen stuff like the Switch Lite. We've seen stuff like the Switch OLED. But I just feel like it makes more sense to me to keep the Switch branding because obviously that's very hot. And to just upgrade your systems as you go along, much like you see with mobile devices. Obviously, don't do it as frequently because cell phones seem to come out like every year or two. But if Nintendo can carve their own sort of lane within this video game industry with its hardware side of things by just upgrading things as they go along, I think that's a big win. You know, like a like a refresh every couple years or something like that. That that to me makes a lot of sense. Now, of course, there is the fact that the Nintendo Switch base hardware hardware is definitely starting to you know feel the strain like we always talk about it's definitely not keeping up with the other systems in terms of raw power but there's ways around that with stuff like dlss there's ways around that with you know basically just making artificial intelligence do a bulk of the work i don't think cloud gaming is the answer obviously we've seen cloud gaming sort of you know be very hit or miss with more misses than hits on the nintendo switch but very interesting stuff and the final interesting thing I saw from all of this was the acquisitions talk, because obviously Microsoft just bought Activision Blizzard. Sony just bought Bungie. So a lot of people are like, well, what's Nintendo going to do? Now, traditionally speaking, Nintendo doesn't really buy companies. They'll work with companies over and over again, but they don't necessarily buy the companies themselves. Of course, this was brought up in the discussions, and President Forokara said the following. Our brand was built upon products crafted with dedication by our employees, and having a large number of people who don't possess nintendo dna in our group would not be a plus to the company so first off what does that mean like nintendo dna are we like you know you artificially inseminating uh, like, oh you want to work for nintendo you know let's give you some of that nintendo blood give you some of that nintendo semen in a in a freaking syringe like i don't know that's kind of weird but no i mean obviously what he's talking about is how nintendo like we've been talking about they just sort of carve their own little path now i don't think that that's necessarily closing the door on acquisitions i just think they're going to be very particular about their acquisitions and if they make any acquisitions it's probably going to be something like we saw with next level studios where they purchased that and then just made them an in-house studio there's companies like grezzo there's companies like retro studios and you know these are the probably the companies that you could potentially see nintendo maybe bringing under their infrastructure mercury steam who just did metroid dread that's another good company that you could have within this as far as like the big companies are concerned konami sega capcom as much as i would love it because you know konami doesn't do shit 
with their titles. They don't do anything with them. Capcom, you know, Capcom's doing its thing. Capcom is probably very valuable right now. Sega has the whole Sega Sammy portion, where the Sammy portion is what's making a lot of money. So I don't even think that's necessarily feasible. But Konami would be, in my opinion, the, the perfect company to buy because you get Contra, you get Castlevania, you get Metal Gear Solid. Like, there's so much you could do with that. But like they say, you know, they haven't artificially inseminated them. You know, they don't have that Nintendo blood, that Nintendo DNA running through them. So more than likely, it's just going to be smaller companies that pretty much just, I guess, do what Nintendo says. Like, make us a Metroid game. Make us a, a Mario Golf game. You know, stuff like that. But it'll be interesting to see if this tone changes. Obviously, some of this is going to be fluff, smoke and mirrors. You're talking to investors. You want them to invest in the company because when the stocks are up, the company makes more money. But just some very interesting stuff that I wanted to talk about today because a lot of stuff to unpack here. And, you know, it's salute to the Switch. Salute to Metroid Dread. You're going to crack that $3 million and I'm going to have to play this guy. Look at him. Look at him. Stupid top hat. Son of a bitch. Anyways, give me your thoughts on everything in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.